welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and I am a full-time kindergarten teacher who flips furniture on the side to earn a profit to put straight toward my student loan debt. Today, I am going to be flipping this beautiful hutch. I have been dying to do a hutch from the moment I started flipping furniture and I finally worked up the courage to do a hutch and I found the perfect one because this isn't a huge hutch, a huge project like most hutches are. This one is nice and small and I think that it could go perfect as someone's coffee bar or a little storage cabinet even in an apartment. This is gonna be a super fun flip and I'm excited to get started. I found this piece at Goodwill and it was actually marked at $79.99. My mom was with me when we were looking at this at Goodwill and of course she loves to negotiate so she asked if there was any way we could get a little bit of a lower price and the guy said well if anyone is over the age of blank that they could do a 20% off discount. So my mom was over that age. She's considered a senior citizen at Goodwill. Don't tell her I told you that. And so we ended up getting this for $65. So it was a little bit more than I normally pay for a piece. But like I said, I've been dying to do a hutch and I think that I can sell this for a pretty good profit. Let's flip this hutch. All right, so the first step is going to be to remove the hardware and then we can get to cleaning. I'm not gonna be keeping this hardware. I do wanna get it off here before I clean. All right, so when I got this hutch, we knew that there was a little issue with the door up here. So the issue is it doesn't want to stay closed up here. Okay, so it locks down here, but this is just being a little booger. Well, I thought it was gonna be an easy fix that we would just have to replace the magnet or straighten out the hinges. Well, we tried all of that and then come to find out this door at the top is actually slightly warped. And that is not an easy fix. So the easiest thing that we thought of is to actually take off the doors completely. That was not in my original plan, but again, this door being warped is just not fixable unless we're gonna go to full extent to get this steamed and that's gonna cost a lot of money. And of course, I don't wanna put a lot of money into my piece, so we're just gonna remove the doors. I think that it's still gonna turn out really well. Um, and I think that I can still pull it off. With that being said, I'm gonna remove the doors. Flathead screws are just a bit tougher to get out, especially when they're old, because there's not a lot for the screwdriver to grab onto. It kind of slips out pretty often. So these are in there tight, and so I'm working hard to get them out. one door off i'm sad about it but it again is the best possible thing that we can do at this point second door off the other thing about taking off the doors is that i've also got to figure out a way to get these off which are the door thingies that hold the door in place so I don't know what they're called, but I'm gonna try and pry them out. Okay, and then I'll just have to put some wood filler down in those holes, along with the holes where the hinges were, because I don't want the hinges holes showing. I've also got to figure out how to get these out, see if it can be as easy as the other ones down there. I know I always make you guys nervous with how I do things, but gotta wing it. Thank you. 
now that I got them a little bit started, I'm gonna just pull them out with pliers. There we go. This was a little piece to stop the door. This one was missing, but there is a nail back there, so I'm gonna pry that out. And then we'll pry this one out as well. All the hardware is off except these little guys right here. I have no idea how in the world I'm gonna get them out because they're metal and they're in there. This one seems to be a little wiggly. Oh, hey, I got it out. Let's pull it. Maybe the pliers will pull it out. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yay, that was so much easier than I thought. Okay, hardware's out. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the shelves as well. I'll clean those separately. Oh yeah, and when I got it, this was also not attached. It was in there, so that's a good thing. It's just a little wooden piece that goes over here to hold the bottom shelf. So I'll just be reattaching that. These are the only pieces of hardware that I'm actually keeping to put the shelves back on. They're kind of unique. Now I can finally get to cleaning. All right, I am going to clean with some Dawn dish soap today. It is a degreaser, so it'll get out all of the dirt and grease and grime and yuck, because this piece is quite old. So I definitely want to get it clean before I do anything else. And now I'm going to go switch out my water to put some fresh water and rinse everything off and then I will be ready to fill in all of the holes with wood filler. I'm really thinking about leaving these shelves raw wood. Um, I think that with the look that I'm going for, it's really gonna bring it all together. So we'll see at the end end, but plan is to leave them raw. All right, all clean. Let's get these holes filled. I am gonna be using the wood filler from Minwax. I am basically just taking my putty knife and shoving in some wood filler into all of the holes that I want filled. Then kind of scraping it off, making it flat. But I do like to leave a little excess on the top. That way when I'm sanding down, we have enough filler in there to become flat instead of still having an indent. And then I get the hinge holes as well. Again, I don't want these leftover hinge holes there because the doors aren't going back on, so we gotta fill the holes. And then on the top as well, this is gonna be a little bit more challenging because we've kinda gotta let it stay up there, so we're not gonna be able to shove it as much because it might fall like that 
Might have to get a little dirty with our hands. Kind of shove it up in the hole and hope it stays in there. Could put tape in there, but then I feel like it wouldn't dry. Have you guys ever done this? Filling holes upside down? Never done it before. Got any tips? I'm just kind of going to shove it up in there. All right, that should stay. Okay, and then my last step for wood filler is I'm gonna go around the whole piece and see if there's any major gouges or veneer missing or anything like that that would need to be filled before I do any other painting or sanding. Since I'm going to be replacing the hardware on the doors, I also need to do a little bit of wood filler on both doors. So it looks like originally there were three holes. So I've got three holes to fill instead of just the usual two. Also, right down over here, there is a little bit of missing piece of veneer here and down here on the leg. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that as well. Again, I kind of like to use my fingers and I also like to go a little bit overboard with how much I use. And that way later on, I can just sand it down to the perfect shape. And then of course you're never going to get old pieces to look exactly like the way that they did before. Um, they got all used so that kind of adds the character as well. I want to obviously get as much as I can filled and fixed but kind of just the fun part of flipping furniture is it's very unique at the end and every little crack and dent kind of gives it more character. That's at least my opinion. So now, basically, we're just gonna wait it out and I'll come back tomorrow and the wood filler will be dry and then we'll be able to sand it down and get started putting some color on. Alrighty, the wood filler is all dry and it's hardened, so I am gonna grab my sander put my mask on and get to sanding. Also, I'm not going all the way down to the bare wood I am just scuff sanding the entire piece. All right, and now I'm gonna take my brush and just wipe away all the dust. Then I'll grab my microfiber cloth and then that will be the final step to get all of this dust out of here. All right, so I just finished up with the details and sanding around where I missed with the sander. So now I'm gonna get all of the dust off and I'm actually gonna get out the blower and blow all the dust off just to make it a little bit quicker. And then I'll go back with my microfiber cloth and get any remaining dust. Hopefully it doesn't blow over the hutch. All right, and that should be good. Now that'll give me a lot of extra time saved because all the dust is blown off and I'm just gonna wipe it all down 
one last time. This microfiber cloth, which is kind of a stickier cloth and attracts the dust. Uh, there shouldn't be too much left on it, but we don't want any on it because the paint will then adhere to the dust instead of adhering to the surface. So we need to get rid of all the dust. Now that I've got all the dust cleaned off, I'm ready to prep for paint. So I'm gonna put some painter's tape on the areas where I don't want to get painted on. And I've also got some handy dandy new knee pads here to not destroy my knees. I know it kind of looks silly, but that's the reasoning for them. I am planning on leaving the bottom here wood. So I don't want to paint on the insides of the doors at all. So I'm just gonna add some painter's tape around the edges so that I can avoid getting those painted on. So we're gonna be using Dixie Bell's In the Navy. So it's a nice deep navy color and I'm excited to put it on there and see what it looks like. Don't forget, I gotta use my mister bottle. The mister just kind of smooths out the paint. This is a pretty thick paint, chalk paint generally is. And so when you use water with it to water it down just a little bit, it helps it glide along the surface a lot easier and smooth it out. So I sprayed down with my mister bottle the surface of the um, where I'm going to be painting. I sprayed a little bit in the paint and I sprayed my brush just to have consistency over each surface and then that will also help my paint just smooth out a lot easier. You might be asking yourself why I'm not using primer for this project. And the reason being is because I did a scuff sand and generally you use a primer if it's not going to adhere to the surface itself or if you think you're gonna have color popping through. And I don't think I'm gonna have color from the wood popping through because this is such a dark, deep color, it'll block it on its own. I'm trying to get this first coat on here. I feel the wind picking up. I think it's supposed to rain today and it's coming quick. So I've got to get this first coat on before it hits. So I'm not trying to miss any spots, but trying to put a little pep in my step. I'm doing something that I've never done before, but I've seen other people do it. And that is that I'm actually painting the hinges the same color as the rest of the piece. We'll see how I like it. Yeah, like I said, I've never done it before, so just have to see how it turns out. I always try to get 
in these little spots. I gotta kind of stipple my brush, push all the paint in there, but then I don't want it to drip, so I make sure to go back over it and get any drips that may be happening. All right, we beat the rain on the first coat. Step back and take a look. All right, looks pretty good. And the reason I didn't put paint on the back of it is because I'm gonna be putting wallpaper back here. I haven't quite decided. I've got a poll up over on my Instagram. If you don't follow me over there, I frequently do polls, lots of behind the scenes questions and just a lot of different things. So be sure to go follow me over there at Furniture Flipping Teacher so that you could join in on the voting for things like this. So I'm gonna let this first coat dry and then we'll come back for coat number two. Alrighty, it's time for the second coat. I still see some of the coloring from the original piece popping through, so I want to cover all that up, and hopefully two coats will be enough to do that. Coat number two is done. We're gonna be good with two coats. So we're gonna let this dry um, and then we're gonna get the top coat on it to protect it. And then after that comes the wallpaper. I am so pumped because although that wind has been picking up a little bit, the rain hasn't came yet. So I'm hoping that it'll hold off at least until I'm finished up with this hutch or else we're just gonna have to move right inside the garage. All right, as you can see, the rain came. It's just sprinkling right now and it's not too windy. So we put up a canopy so that we can still use the daylight and I am gonna get the top coat on. So I'm using Dixie Belle's clear coat in flat because I don't want to have this to be glossy or even semi-gloss. I want it to be a nice matte finish. I am using a foam brush to apply the top coat. I just find that I have more control and it comes with a smoother finish. Generally, I go one way so that the finishing lines look good and all flow together. These foam brushes are literally 50 cents, so you can buy them in a bulk pack or you could buy one at a time. They last you probably about two to three projects before they kind of start to deteriorate. So 50 cents for three projects. I'd call that a good buy. All right, the top coat is all finished up. It's got to dry for a while, and there were a couple of spots where when I put the top coat on, some of the blue paint came off, so I'm gonna go back and touch those up as well. But for right now, I am going to um, put some wood wax onto the wood to kind of bring it back to life, both inside of here and on the shelves that I'm keeping raw wood. 
So as I had shown you before, there was a little shelf rack that had fallen out. And so I'm just gonna be replacing it or not replacing it, but reinstalling it. So one of the nails is already in there and I grabbed another small nail and I'm just gonna hammer that in to make it match this other side. And there's actually a really nice line here for me already. So all I gotta do is put it in there I am going to be using some Big Mama's Butter from Dixie Belle and it's the Orange Grove scent. So it smells really good and I'm going to be using a wax brush and I'm just going to be rubbing it in on this raw wood and it'll just revitalize it, bring it back to life while also making it smell good. I've never used this on my channel before um, but it really revitalizes the wood. It's actually kind of like magic. It's kind of a cool result once you see the finished product. All right, so we've got all that Big Mama's Butter all in there. I'm gonna do one quick layer on the top of this and then uh, I think I'm gonna put it in there, then put it on because that way I give a good base and make sure it's all stable. You can just see the difference on how crazy it is just, just bringing that back to life. Doesn't that just look so much better? Just a little bit of Big Mama's Butter and some elbow grease getting it into the wood grain and it just makes it pop, makes it shine. That will dry and then it also smells like oranges. So let's get the wallpaper on. All right, it is that time for the wallpaper. And as I said before, I put a poll over on Instagram and it has been neck and neck the entire three hours that this poll has been up. So I'm gonna show you guys the results. I'm looking right now and blue, this one has 121 votes. And gold, the one with gold, this one has 128 votes. Guys, it's literally been almost tied the whole race. We were kind of pulling for the gold. I think this will really be good because it's going to really pop with the hardware. I'm gonna be putting gold hardware on the doors down here. So just pulling it all together. I'm excited to see how this looks on the back of the hutch. Now my steps are to measure and cut and then I'll get to sticking it down. It looks like I'm gonna be able to do one row and then I'm going to have to cut the second row but hopefully we'll be able to line up the design so that it looks seamless. I also got a couple of wallpaper um, tools to help me with this because I knew I was going to be doing it and I knew that this would be a good seven dollar investment. I've also never really done actual true walls quote unquote walls with this. I've just done drawers, so it's kind of a different feel because I feel like it has to be a little bit more perfect. Okay, so I think I've got it all lined up to where I need to cut here back at the seam and where it's lined up at the bottom, lined up on the sides. I've made a little crease. All right, so I am going to fold back this part here, and then I'm gonna stick it down. I think I'm gonna start from the top and then stick it down and make sure it's lined up on the side as well, and then go from there. Well, the tape from where they had rolled the wallpaper together is sticky and leaving that bad residue and it's becoming dirty and that's kind of, not making me very happy, but you live and learn. So I'm going to cut a new piece. 
think I'll just use this one to cut the exact same size and then we'll go from there. Okay, and now I'm going to use my wallpaper smoother router and grab it, smooth it out as I go. I don't want any bubbles, so we wanna get those out as we go, lifting it up again if we need to. Get as smooth as possible. All right, no bubbles. Just got a little excess down here that we're gonna go ahead and cut right off. This is just a tad bit tougher than I thought it'd be, but we're getting there. I got the last piece cut and hopefully is going to fit in my spot where I had it. Um, I might have to be cutting a little bit off, which will be fine. I did a little extra just in case, but we're going to lay it down and see what happens. All right, now that we're done with the wallpaper, that got me a little frustrated. I've never actually done it on a wall. I've done it in drawers before, so that was a first time for me. I'm definitely going to be watching some more videos on how to install wallpaper, but I think that it's gonna look good enough. And I, now that I have it flipped over, which by the way, every time you paint or refinish a piece of furniture, you always wanna make sure you get on the underside at least some point before you sell it. Cause as you can see, it is just super dirty. So we're gonna spray it and wipe all that down. You can choose to do it at the beginning, like when you're cleaning the rest of it. I decided to wait until I was doing when I knew that it was going to be flipped on its back because this is a bigger piece. But we just want to get all those cobwebs and dust off of that bottom there. And then not only does flipping it over reveal dust and dirt on the bottom, but it also kind of reveals some spots that need to be touched up with paint. So as you can see, I just didn't get the underside of this drawer. And like I said before, I was gonna go through and get some of the spots that I had missed previously. So that's what I'm gonna do next. All right, so I got all of the touch-ups done and my last step before we're able to set it up is to put the hardware on. So I'm gonna drill some new holes and then we're gonna get those gold hardware pieces on. I measured how tall the doors are and I decided I wanted the hardware to be right in the middle. So we put the level right in the middle and we are going to drill two holes right where this level is. And I think I'm gonna set it up and then I'm gonna screw the hardware in and we're gonna see how this baby looks. All right, so the holes are in. I'm going to put the hardware on. I haven't showed you guys yet, but I'm choosing these gold tees for the hardware. All right, now it's the moment of truth. Do we keep the shelves raw or do we paint them? And two in. It's done. I personally like the wood shelves, so I'm gonna leave it like that. I think I'm gonna go ahead and stage it up 
and I'm probably gonna stage it as a coffee bar slash pantry. I think it would look really cute in someone's kitchen to just store things or even just as a little decorative hutch. Could store things down below. I just think the raw wood down here brings those together up there as well. My opinion, if it doesn't sell, I can always paint the shelves again. I posted this on Facebook Marketplace yesterday. I have it listed right now at $375. So we'll see if it goes at that or if I'll have to lower it here in a couple of days. Let's do a quick recap on this hutch and the expenses that I spent on it. So originally it was $65 that I paid for it. The wallpaper costs about $9 but I only use about half of it, so we'll say $5. And then all of the materials together cost me about $15. So that is a grand total of $85 that I am in on this. So not too bad for a little bit more of a pricey piece and for bringing in some excess materials than I may normally use. I try to kind of limit myself on spending too much money um, on outside expenses and materials. But for this one, I knew that I wanted to pull it together and those hardware pieces were really just kind of outdated. So it definitely needed a quick update. The wallpaper did take a little bit longer than anticipated. So I got it posted a little bit later than I really wanted to. I was hoping to be able to sell it by now, but let's talk a little bit more about how the hutch went and how pleased I am with the results. So the wallpaper in the back was probably my most difficult thing with this piece. I thought that it was gonna be similar to laying in the drawers or to just applying it to a flat surface, but since these walls are right here in the way and it's pretty tall and up and down, it was a little bit difficult for me to be able to get into the corners and to be able to flatten it out nicely to keep the sides even and so on. And especially because I had to cut half of it, if I would have just had the part where it was a full sheet and then another full sheet, I think that would have been a lot easier because the part that was the most difficult for me and that I will be researching on how to do a little bit better is the cutting of the side up here and also the cutting of the tops and the bottoms to make it fit into this space. Overall, I really think that it turned out awesome. The gold, I'm really excited that that was chosen instead of the blue. I think the gold up here makes the hardware down below pop. So I just love this look overall. It kind of has a whole bunch of different vibes going here. There's the raw wood and the gold for mid-century, but the neutral, the navy, and just all of these different looks coming together to make one look and I am excited for the person who is going to find it and love it and want to buy it. Remember to go follow me over on Instagram to see when this baby gets sold and also for a lot of behind the scenes. If you like what you saw here today and you want to join along on my journey of paying off my student loan debt and flipping furniture, be sure to get subscribed down below and I will see you on Thursday for another video. See you on the flip side.